Okay, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event uh, a webinar that we um, do every Wednesday mornings live at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, they are recorded, so anything we've done um, over the past four years you can find on the Encompass Live website and watch any of our previous shows there. Uh, we cover um, a variety of, any, of things. Anything that is library related, we'll put it on the show. So we sometimes have presentations or interviews, uh, many training sessions, um, whatever it is that um, comes up that might be of interest or that we want to share with uh, librarians um, in Nebraska and across the country, we um, put on the show. This morning, I'm trying to bring it up here, there we go. We have a few staff people here from the Nebraska Department of Labor. You're both from the Department of Labor, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, that are going to show us the, um, some information about doing unemployment. Um, that situation has changed and how that is done. So we're going to give an update on how um, people who might come into your libraries might need to apply for unemployment um, insurance and get a, um, a, a demo, um, a tour of the website that's out there as well. Um, and first, we have um, Greg Rosenblum, who's going to go first, and I'm just going to hand over control to you with the PowerPoint. You should be able to use the mouse use the here mouse. to advance. And Oh, that's okay. We can start here. There we go. All okay. right. <laughs> <laughs> and go ahead and take it away. I'll put that there in case you need it. Okay. Well, hello, everybody. I'm Greg Rosenblum. I'm a UI Unemployment Insurance Team Supervisor in the Benefits Section. Um, what I'm going to talk about today is is this change that we've we're, that we're making to provide services online to allow claimants to access their claim online and really do most of their work online. Um, as of December 2nd, claimants are required to file weekly claim for benefits and to log their work searches online. Um, <clears throat> Prior to this law going into an effect, quite a lot of people already were using uh, the website, the Nebraska Department of Labor website, to file their online claims. Um, they were not able to record their work searches online, but they were encouraged to uh, keep a record of those in case there was ever an audit or question as to whether they were meeting the requirements for unemployment insurance. Um, so. Just prior to this going into effect, about 60% of people were already filing online. Um, now that we're making the change, they're all required to file online. It's presented some issues for some folks in finding computers or in accessing websites or in understanding the technology that they're now using. Um, but overall, it seems to be a fairly smooth process. Um, today, I would like to... I, identify this benefit payment system. This is the program claimants will be using to file online claims. Um, I can give you some of the kind of common questions that claimants have. And you may also have some experience with claimants that I would really like to get some of your input and uh, answer questions that you may have had from claimants that seem to come up regularly. To file the unemployment insurance claim, um, they'll go to the www.dol.nebraska.gov. Uh, they can type that address into the bar and get right there. Um, over in the corner here, if you see my arrow, there's a link to Any Works. Buffy's going to talk about that website a little bit, uh, that part of the Department of Labor's website. And there's also a link from that portion that they can get back here to the Department of Labor. Um, they select this link here, File for Unemployment. We'll bring up the welcome screen in the main menu where there's actually quite a lot of information that uh, they can find out about their claim. Or the first link, File a Claim. It includes if a person is filing a new claim or if they have a claim uh, that they need to reopen or if they want to file a claim for extended benefits. And today, we're going to address filing a weekly claim or recording their work search. So you can see some of the other information, if they have questions about their personal identification number, if they want to change their payment method. This is all available from uh, this part. They don't need to call in and wait you know, for the for, uh, 
claim specialist to, to do some of those kind of things in terms of maintaining their information on their claim. You select that link, you come to the next screen, they're sign in, and they are required, of course, to use their social security number and their personal identification number, a PIN number. Um, anyone who's filing a new weekly claim shouldn't be a new customer, but if they are filing a new claim, they'll be required to select this link up here, the new customer registration. And there we'll gather their name, address, uh, some security information that if they happen to forget their PIN number, um, we can verify who it is and, and change that for them. If they're unsure of their PIN, they can change it in order to keep it secure, or if they are uncertain about the PIN that they're entering, if that's the correct one, uh, and it'll ask for some identifying information and then allow them to change it to a new number. If they enter that information and it matches, it brings up the main menu. And what we're going to file here, a weekly claim for benefits. We'll address also this recording the work search contacts. Um, these have been requirements that people make these job contacts. And as of December 2nd, then, we're requiring that it be recorded online. Uh, the, the screens that you'll see here, or that the claimants will see, uh, identifies what week they are filing for. Um, this may be important if a person hasn't filed last week, for example. Uh, the dates that they get up there may not be for last week. Generally, a claim will close down if a person doesn't file every week. Um, occasionally, this will show uh, the week prior, and if that's not the week that they're wanting to claim for, then they should cancel this, and they would have to then speak with a claim specialist. Um, but the First question here, during the week listed above, did you work? Um, the claimants are required to report when they work, and for who they work, and how much they earned. And one of the common misconceptions among claimants is they'll file their weekly claim and they'll reason that, well, I wasn't paid anything yet. I don't get paid until next week. And so they won't enter any amounts in here. Uh, and Oftentimes that comes to our notice later, and then they end up being overpaid because they are required to report what they've earned. And so we encourage claimants to keep track of the hours that you work and how much you were paid per hour, and then you can enter that gross amount correctly here. Okay, weekly certification. Uh, each of these questions that they ask, is a requirement to be eligible for unemployment insurance for this particular week. So a person has to be available four days or more to accept a job if offered. They have to make at least two contacts with employers and attempt to obtain employment. In the past, you know, we've asked them to answer this question and then keep their job contacts on their own and be able to present them if they're requested. And going forward, we're going to be gathering those online. A person has to be physically able to work four days or more during the week. And if they're ill, uh, they're not able to work. Uh, they might be available to work, uh, which is you know, the first question. A person can be available to work. They're home, they're ready to go to work, but they're ill, so they're not able to work four days or more. Uh, asked, did you refuse an offer to work or referral to a job? Did you begin school or did your class schedule change? Did you begin receiving a pension benefit or did the amount of that benefit change? This is another one that's oftentimes misidentified as unemployment insurance. Uh, pension benefit here, we're talking about retirement that they've received from some company. So if uh, we don't mean unemployment insurance. And some people, when they start receiving benefits, think of this pension benefit that maybe this is uh, their unemployment insurance that they've received. 
And did you receive any payment other than wages or pension? Any vacation pay, holiday pay, workers compensation, or a bonus? Now, you may frequently get people to ask, I know claimants ask claim specialists frequently, how am I supposed to answer these questions? Um, the best response is to tell them answer it truthfully. If they did not make two contacts with employers, uh, they need to let us know. And it, it may affect their benefits, um, but, you know, they are legally, if they answer other than truthfully, they're legally drawing benefits that they're not entitled to. Um, and there's a, quite a lot of process that goes through trying to identify when we've paid benefits incorrectly and um, to recover those payments that were made. So by they may think, you know, they're doing themselves a favor by answering in a way that they receive their benefit payment. But it can come back to haunt them in the sense of overpayments when they receive statements that show that they've been paid benefits they were not entitled to. So I know you can't answer questions for people, but if they ask you questions about how do I answer these, you might help interpret the question if they have some question about that. But ultimately, they just need to answer those questions honestly, and we'll go from there. They'll receive a confirmation statement. There's a long number here that they can take down as, uh, as their own record showing that they have filed the week. And it will show what date it was filed. At this point, a person is allowed to select click here where they can uh, enter their work searches um, if they haven't entered it already. At this point, a person has they file on Sunday, beginning on Sunday, for the previous week, and they have until the following Saturday to enter those work searches for the previous week. Um, this will be changing very soon. Uh, so we would encourage people to start right now um, entering their work searches at the same time that they file their weekly claim for benefits. Uh, going forward, they won't, be on the, they won't be able to file that weekly claim unless they can also identify the employers that they've contacted. So if you select click here, you come to the work search log. Um, there's quite a lot of information they can enter when they contacted, the name of the person they contacted, the name of the employer, the employer's address, a phone number, what position they applied for, and how they made that contact. At this point, the employer name is the only required field, but again, going forward, this is going to be expanded. Um, what claimants need to keep in mind is that this does go through an audit process, and if their job contacts are selected to be audited, we have to have some way to verify that they've made the contacts they say they did, or there's potential they may be disqualified for benefits for that week. And on that main menu, just to come back here, uh, they can enter that work search any time during the week. So if they're, if they're in your library and, and they have done a couple of work searches already this week, but the week isn't over, uh, they can enter those work searches right now. And then when they go to file their weekly claim for benefits, they'll already be entered. And that would just bring up the same screen. Now, any of this information that's being prevented, these screens, uh, sorry, that's being presented, is also available here, information and instructions on the Department of Labor website, along with detailed instructions in English and Spanish. Uh, you can direct claimants. I would encourage you, if they have questions about how are they supposed to file their claims online, to use this resource. Um, going forward, we'll continue to add of filing a claim from an initial claim online. Um, at this point, that isn't a requirement, although they are able to do that. And if you, there's the front page, the first page of these instructions to file the weekly claim and log the work search. And the screenshots that are used in these directions are the same as the screenshots that we just went through. Uh, so you'll be familiar with those. and. 
to maybe direct them some ways. So that's my presentation for how to file uh, weekly claims and how to log the work search. Uh, just do you want to move on now or do we want to take questions on this portion? Okay. Do you have any questions at this point on that process? If anybody has any questions, use your GoToWebinar interface and type in your questions there. I'm monitoring them here on the laptop. Nothing came in while you were talking. Okay. So they're very interested in listening, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No. Nothing urgent right now, it looks like. If you do think of anything, feel free to type it in. We can grab it later at the end, too. Okay. And I, my contact information will be available to the librarians. Um, we'll be sharing that uh, with you later. In terms of my contact information being made to the public, it can get overwhelming the number of claimants calling my personal number. So the preference would be to direct them to, to the claim center, the 458-2500 number, or from online to the NICHELP, N-D-O-L. Nick help at Nebraska .gov. We do have one question that just came in. Mm -hmm. um, Beth Goble, who was just here with us here at the Library Commission, how do people get a PIN number? They establish their own PIN number. I can roll it back to that first page. They can establish a PIN number right here. So they make it up themselves. When they, they do their, their new customer registration, right. Okay. And then we do have another question um, from Julie Bino here at Lincoln City Libraries. Does the work search log match the parameters of the weekly schedule of the claims? Um, I'm not sure that I understand that. The work search log. I don't know either. Uh, the, the work, I'll address the way I think it's uh, intended. The, the work search log, the log, it covers the prior week that the claimant is filing a claim for. So on Sunday, uh, you're going to file a claim for the previous week that just completed Sunday through Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, the work search log would address what job contacts were made during that same week that a person filed their claim for benefits. And just does it blank out at the end of each week? So like does it? Once it's beyond the week that they're allowed to file for, mm -hmm. for their um, work searches, yes, they cannot go back to prior weeks to enter mm -hmm. their job contacts. They have to do it every single week. They have to do it every mm -hmm. single week. Okay, yep, sure, thank you. Yep, then you yep. Is that it? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is, um, you know, this is this move is, is partly uh, an effort to make sure that claimants are consistent with the law, that they're doing what is required in order for them to receive benefits. Great. Okay. All right. Let me okay. just... Um, there was a, oh, wait. one clarification on the oh. web address. It was a dot. Oh, ndol dot Nick help. Thank you. Ah, we can go in and edit that before we put we'll it up. We'll change that yeah. before it goes up. I thought that looked like it was scrunched together an awful lot. Actually, hit escape on the keyboard there for me, and I can do this right now while we're here. Right there? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. There you go. That's what it's supposed to be. Thank you. We'll save it that way, and that'll be the one yeah. that we'll get. <laughs> that'll be with that here on, the, on the, the correct uh, email there. Okay, um, I think we'll, yeah, we'll move on to, okay, there we go, and here's the mouse, so you can we now have control. I need the mic or the mic. Um, sure. All right, good morning, everyone. Um, <laughs> All right, um, what we're going to go through today is AnyWorks. Some of you are familiar with AnyWorks because I know as part of the broadband project, We've had people from our career centers coming out and working with librarians, um, teaching them the ins and outs of any works, as well as hosting some workshops. If you are part of that broadband commission um, outreach and you haven't heard from a career center yet, I would encourage you to uh, uh, contact me at, it's actually elizabeth.cranford.nebraska.gov, and we can 
we're on phase two right now, but we have a phase three and a phase four coming up rather quickly as well. So we definitely want to outreach to all the libraries that are interested. Now, one thing you might often receive at the library is people coming in and say, where's, I need to use a computer to look for a job. Now, ideally, um, our librarians in our state are familiar with our online labor exchange. It's free to employers to post jobs, free to job seekers to look for jobs. And of course, we're tied right in with the entire Department of Labor in terms of they can go to one place, whether it's registering for their unemployment or seeking new employment. And right here on AnyWorks, we have everything they need. Um, <clears throat> we're constantly trying to build a new foundation, bringing in a lot of partners in from our community colleges. And so we have a lot more registrants coming in that are, have experience, different levels of experience and education. Now, one thing we did last week is we launched a new version of AnyWorks, so it might look a little different if you've already received the training. So I am actually going to log in from the perspective of someone that would walk into a library and want to search for a job that are registered on AnyWorks. Not saying I'm already registered. Sometimes my fingers are faster than any works. There we go. All right. I was just missing a digit. So the great new thing is we have a brand new dashboard in any works to make it a little user friendly, a lot more user friendly, actually. We have these, um, we've always had the menu here at the left side, this orange and black design. With the new version, we have new tabs that take people directly to what they want to do. Um, and so, for example, in this one, finding a great job today. We have our, their local job listings. When they register, they usually register according to their zip code, determine where they want to search for jobs. So if I want to look at today's job listing, I could follow this hyperlink. And according to what I have in my current online resume, the first job that comes up is what might fit for me. There's a project manager at Huddle right here in Lincoln, Nebraska. From here, I could look at the job and drill down through the job information. So I'd see it's a full-time job. They've posted it to run through February 9th. And they're a preferred employer. What is a preferred employer? Anytime you see a preferred employer, this is somebody that the Nebraska Department of Labor, Office of Employment and Training, whether it's through our career centers or through our virtual unit in our administration office, we're working directly with that employer in recruiting their applicants. What does this mean? This means that if somebody is interested in this position and they make contact, whether it's through our career center or through our virtual service unit, we likely have a link directly to that employer. So we're serving as a job placement. We then contact Huddle, and I happen to know who our contacts at Huddle are, um, and say, we have this great applicant. Um, we're referring them to this position. We know that they're going to apply online. And then they will get back to us and say, yes, that was a great referral, or that was a pretty good referral, but we need somebody with skills A, B, and C. And that's the big thing, is matching what they're looking for in terms of skill sets. So now if I look back through these job requirements, I know the minimum education level right here. Huddle always requires at least a bachelor's degree. We can also even look at the job skill requirements. What did they mark as far as what's required for this job? Well, they didn't, which is not always um, rare. <laughs> Sometimes they, employers are pretty busy. They want to get the basic job information in there. Um, now, in this, from my perspective at this point, I'll probably go back and say, who's talking with Huddle? We need to get some employer skill requirements in there so people can really start digging in on what the skills they need to have for this type of position. We also see that there's a salary range. Not all employers are posting salary ranges. Um, and that's simply because of the competitive market, especially as we go into our transportation industries, our CDL truck drivers, that aren't always putting those salary range because they're in high competition with each other. We can then look at our labor market wage rate. So if I click that hyperlink for project managers, I can see according to our employment wage statistics. Now, this is in conjunction with our labor market um, information 
services, which is right with our DOL and DOL as well. And we can see the estimated 2012 employment wage statistics. Entry level for, for project managers, the mean, as well as experience. Experienced project managers could be earning up to $82,000 or $39 in some sense per hour. Now we look at the wage rates on advertised jobs. So specifically, Huddle advertised this under the computer and mathematical occupation. So looking at that field, we would then know that um, the statistical breakdown of the average wage data ranges from 40000 to 91000 usually depending on experience and education. Of those desired candidates, um, potential candidates on any works right now that are looking for jobs as information technology project managers just in Lancaster County, we can see a range of candidates right here and what their wages, what wages they expect. So if I'm going to apply for this job, and I know that the wage is between forty and fifty thousand. I know that on any works, I have at least eight other competitors for this job. Now that may not that may mean other people are going to come in and apply for it, or these ten people right here that prefer sixty-five to seventy-five thousand may say, "Well, I can take a little bit of a pay cut because I really need a job or I really want to change." So they can that just gives you an idea of your competition as well. It also does wage area by uh, wage rates by the area throughout the state and in related occupations. And you can just keep scrolling through any works. We have so much labor market information that's integrated within every job posting. And just think, that was just my first click. <laughs> any works is so expansive. Um, I could also look at jobs based on my employment history. Now, I know that this particular login that I've used, I've often used for testing information, so I, I have all kinds of nice fake um, information in here, but let's see what shows up under jobs based on employment history. Well, we might be right on. Um, so the first couple jobs here were human resource manager. Well, I do have to know I have human resources experience, or I could go work at Kohl's. There's an IT position with Olson. But as people register on AnyWorks, and they accurately and don't use it for the testing system like I do, um, fill out their background information, complete their resume. This serves as a great mechanism for directly matching what's, what's in their resume, what's in their background, what skill sets have they selected, and matching them with jobs. We also have jobs and related occupations and current job openings that need my skills, as well as our featured jobs. That's just our first tab. So let's go to Get Recruited. How do I get recruited? Well, this takes us through creating the resume. And <clears throat> with the new version of AnyWorks, the resume wizard actually has changed. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. There's fewer steps to complete, but the wizard takes you right directly through it. Um, if we have time, we can start walking through that today. The next thing we have is setting up your virtual recruiter. What does a virtual recruiter do? Well, it works similarly to finding a job, except I'm not going to come in here and click, you know, what jobs are available based on my employment history because I'm busy. You know, I have a job already, perhaps, or I'm volunteering somewhere. So I'll set up a virtual recruiter, and it will take all, the, all of my skill sets and my employment history and apply it to parameters for a job search. So it's an automated job search, and I can create one, and this is called creating a new job alert, which is our virtual recruiter. So this is where I would set up a job. So if I want to look for a job in um, the computer industry, and there's two, one thing that comes up, either entry-level computer repair technician and I conduct a search, I can see that the computer magician has a job. And this, if this is the type of search that I want to continue to go out and search for me on a regular basis, I'll click Save Search. And then this is where it'll ask me, how often do I want to be contacted? And you can title. So you can have multiple virtual recruiters set up. So for example, I might have 
human resources experience. Maybe I went and received a library science degree, and I'm, I'm willing to start working part-time down at the Gear Branch down the street from where I live, or in a public school library, or perhaps I just want to maybe work part-time at the Buckle. <laughs> Something like that. So you can keep titling them. So in this one, I would, I would put the computer repair or computer positions. I'm getting used to Krista's lap, um, <laughs> keyboard here. And then how often do I want it ran? Well, for our active job seekers, they may want it daily. This one, maybe I just want to see monthly. And then we have a notification method. So AnyWorks has a messaging center known as our communication center. But the great thing about the new version of AnyWorks, I don't necessarily have to log in. Especially if I have a smartphone or any kind of cellular phone, I can now receive all this information via email or on a text message. Now I'm going to set this expiration date to tomorrow because otherwise my phone is going to blow up for the next three weeks. Um, and sure, you, what time of day would you like it? Well, if you take lunch every day at 1130, maybe you want to see these by noon in your text message. Now, if you, one thing that most cell phones now have, you know, just a regular text messaging packet and they don't have to pay, but I know there are things out there. So they do need to know if they are receiving the text message, their standard rates will apply. And then I have my search criteria information, so I know I'm looking in Gage, Lancaster, Odo, and Seward, and this can be expanded at any time as well. And then I will save it. So now I have a new virtual recruiter set up. All right, now I'm going back to my dashboard. So that's how I'm going to get recruited. That is very slick. I like that. <laughs> yeah. And the next thing is, is um, one thing that I've learned, especially the last, well, on Friday and uh, Tuesday of this week, I was doing a lot of interviews. And it amazed me how many people came into the interview and um, didn't always do their research. And that's the biggest thing we always tell our job seekers is, if you land an interview or even beforehand, do your research. Right here, we have a hyperlink on contacting potential employers. So I can search for employers posting jobs or I can research employers in just one area. So for example, um, let's research Huddle since we saw them earlier. Click the search button. I see that they're uh, North 8th Street in Lincoln. And here's the information. So I can see who the CEO is. The business description is computer software. Um, and very brief amount of information, but look what they have for me. A link to their website. Now I can tell you, if, if you ever have some extra time and you want to learn about Huddle here in Lincoln, Nebraska, they have some great um, interactive videos and quotes and just a fun website overall and they are also rapidly growing um, they've been featured in the economist new york times and on espn so quite a growing company here in lincoln so if i was received an interview there i would definitely go look at their website um, yeah, how do i get back Oh, it opened up a second tab, it looks like. Okay. The oh, there we go. Yeah, Great. Right, okay. Yeah. So that's how to research an employer. Um, next thing is getting trained. One of our biggest things that we hear from our employers is um, lack of experience as well as maybe lack of some soft skills. We'll go into that in a little bit as well. Um, so what's out there right now? Maybe we have so many people that want to... Uh, change careers or change their path and due to the recession many people have been forced to do that so here's links to additional training and education opportunities maybe some financial aid available next tab is reviewing the current job market so where are some hot job locations and let's check it out well right here Douglas County Sarpy County Lancaster County and Buffalo County let's look at what's hot in Buffalo well, in Buffalo County, I 
the number of candidates and openings for jobs by occupation. So we have a lot, and we can sort these too. If, we, if I click this, uh, like for job openings, if I want to know who has the most job openings, I can just click the job openings uh, anywhere in the words or in the box. So I can see somebody needs customer service representatives. And when I click on that, it's going to open up um, not only what customer service representatives do, but job openings, and I'd already seen there were seven, as well as office and administrative support occupations that might do the similar um, tasks or need those skill sets. So right here I can see in Kearney, enterprise, um, a confidential employer, Hastings Entertainment, Check and Go, and Jiffy Lube all need customer service reps. Some other hot jobs. And let's, I'm going to sort this by wage because it's always interesting to see. So we see sales managers, executive secretaries and administrative assistants, bookkeeping, accounting and auditing clerks, um, as well as laborers and freight. Now this was still just in Buffalo. So those are some of the hot jobs in Buffalo County. And one thing we've noticed and uh, definitely we're focused on in 2013 here is we know that there's more employers in Nebraska than have even seen any works or maybe even heard about it. And so our goal through 2013 is, yes, we have our Douglas and our Sharper County and our Lancaster County and our highly populated areas, but we want to see more employers posting you know, down in Odo, over in Burt, up in Thayer. And sometimes as our librarians, um, you might be the best connection in regards to our employers. Because you may hear things that we can't fill this position. Well, have they tried any works? Have they contacted us? Because our labor pool on here is definitely growing. Our skill sets are growing in terms of uh, we're partnering with so many community colleges now, so people are graduating with their associate's degree um, and they're looking for work. We can help them connect with employers. Also, tabs on here, analyzing the labor market information. I went into that as we looked at some of the positions available. Uh, unemployment assistance, and this links back to our unemployment filing online. So if I click File Online for Unemployment Benefits, it's going to have a link very soon to what Greg just showed us. Another thing is, um, AnyWorks also talks about, has an area for planning their finances. Sometimes that's some of the most difficult pieces of, um, especially as whether people are unemployed or in Nebraska, we have a lot of underemployed. Um, through the recession, people maybe took jobs that are paying a lot less than they were before, they still have that same mortgage, still have that same car payment, and are often wondering, now what do I do? Well, they almost have to start from scratch planning their overall budget. So those tools are in AnyWorks as well. And maybe they need some help from government benefits. You know, one of our biggest things is priority of service to our veterans. And one thing um, that we've really become aware of is the education of our veterans is very important in terms of when they apply for a job. Veterans' preference, often in job screening instances, um, allow them, whether it's more points or a higher rating, um, many of our employers now are running those resumes through a rating system, and just understanding to be proud as a veteran, be sure to put that on your resume, be sure to put that on your online application. So what else is new in AnyWorks? Well, we have this great dashboard that we can click through all these tabs. We also have a how can we help you section. And that just goes right into the first dashboard piece of finding a job or doing your job market, get recruited, as well as our directory of services. That takes us to career services, job seeker services. Just really another way to look at it, as well as my resources. I like the dashboard look. It seems a lot easier to navigate. Plus, I can change any of these things around. So if I have a benefits plan, and of course this is my test, whether I've enrolled in a trade or a WIA program, and, or I want to 
come in here quite often and look at a job search and do my resume builder or my employment plan. I can look and see I've had 14 job applications. I've made seven applications to internal job and this reflects their entire history as well. So a few years ago when I actually was using AnyWorks to search for um, employment, I could see that I had 14 job applications. I also now have a virtual recruiter. Now the neat thing is, is these can move around. So if I use my correspondence, this is where we create our, res our cover letters, or if I want to look at my messages more often, or I need my calendar at the top to stay organized, I just click on it and drag and drop. So it's really um, customizable to what they look at the most. Sometimes for research, um, if I'm a researcher and not necessarily always looking for a job, I'd want to throw up the labor market services, um, educational services, or if I want, if people often wonder not only how to use AnyWorks, but I'm not quite sure what to do. We might have a lot of our middle schoolers and high schoolers coming into our library. We have a career services section here with assessments right online, free assessments, so they can click, for example, Career Explorer and go right into matching their skills to find a career occupation, matching their interest and work values, matching their occupation, or even the career ladder. So if I click on match your skills, then it goes into, okay, skills are based on two different areas. I have my job skills, my work skills, and I have my personal skills. And this often is, you know, the problem solving. Am I going to show up on work on time? <laughs> so either of these assessments, you just click on those and, and hit continue. So for example, this is where you s a list of your saved skills. So I had obviously went in here before and tested these assessments so they would check mark everything that applied to them. And it would do a job match. All right, so that's my uh, intro to AnyWorks version 12. And I'm going to open it up to any questions you might have as well. Or if you have any questions, Greg's still here too, if you've thought of any. So if anybody has any questions, um, type them into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface, either for Bobby or Greg, for what he was showing earlier. Um, anything else you want to see on the website, anything you're interested in, let us know. Nothing's coming in yet, but it takes time for them to type sometimes. <laughs> um, yeah, Jan Sears, who's from Kimball Public Library, says, impressive. <laughs> Thanks, Jan. Um, yes, I was very <laughs> impressed, too, with the website. There's a lot of things on here that I'm going to be exploring. <laughs> um, just because there's so much you can use it for beyond just looking for a job, all those little help things that are on there. Right. Um, ah, here's some questions coming in. Yes, okay. Um, is there a provision for helping job applicants find daycare? Many women can't work due to a lack of daycare. Mm -hmm. um, that usually will come under either the looking for government benefits or community services under our directory of services. So if I select program and services, um, and I need information about families and children programs, perhaps, or temporary assistance, I need information about programs for families and children, here's my child care resources link. The answer is yes. That, yeah. <laughs> the answer is yes, and I just yeah. happened to give a tour uh -huh. to yeah. find it. No, that's perfect. So, yeah. <laughs> um, it even goes into the Head Start programs. Um, especially for those that, for low-income children from birth to age five, as well as social services for their families. So if they're, they're saying they, they can't work because of child care, mm -hmm. um, Head Start might be a great way, place for them to start, is if they're eligible um, based on their income, and if they're not working, they're probably eligible. Okay. I want to move the microphone over this way a little bit. So 
another uh, next question um, how are new claimants made aware of these services um, like I guess how do you get the word out to the people who might need them um, first of all not people other than claimants can use all of this mm -hmm. I mean I, mm -hmm. and that would right. be something right. that you might address um, Claimants, when they first file their claims, are directed to career centers. If they have any questions about finding new work, they're directed to register at the career centers. Um, and in fact, they're required to have a registration online and active. Right. Um, and so from, from there, a, a resume online and, and that their registration is active. In uh, any works. In any works, right. Mm -hmm. So they are, from filing a claim, if all that they went wanted to do was to get unemployment insurance benefits, um, that process of filing for benefits would also direct them to any works that they have all these other services available. So it's all connected together. Yeah, right. yeah it's all connected. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we try to encourage them um, to navigate the site as best they can. The wizard will take them through the resume. So mm -hmm. here's my resume example um, because I have mine set offline because if we take a look at this, I have some uh, interesting job descriptions. Um, I think I, I have never worked at Billy Frogs, <laughs> um, but you know they can include as much as they want on their resume. But the most important thing is they do have to have what's called an active resume viewable to employers. Mm -hmm. So right now this is set offline. Well, just by opening this resume. Their accessibility should be to set it online, and it's just on with one click. Now I'm going to take mine back offline for this one. Yeah, so yours is for demo purposes, That's but a real person using right. it would want it to be a right. bit online. So they have to be online. active and online because unemployment insurance does audit, and if their resume is not active and set online, um, they could lose that week of benefits until it's set active again. Yeah. And and they are just. To reinforce, the, when they first file a claim, there's a page of requirements and uh, information for them, and that directs them to any works and tells them that they do need to have a resume and they do need to be registered mm -hmm. with any works. So. Um, one for Greg, it says here, can benefits be gotten any way besides computer? Are there forms at job service or computer help available there? which actually has a couple of different questions. <laughs> so um, is there any way besides doing it on the computer? Are there forms available? And then at job service, do they have computer help there? For weekly benefits, claimants are now required to file online. That's the big change That's, that this is all coming from right. and why we do it. Yeah. Right. And, you know, the, the majority had been filing online prior to this law going into place. Um, but, you know, the, the idea behind unemployment insurance is, is really not... Um, you know, an ongoing kind of income for people, but it's to get people from this job to the next job and to provide mm -hmm. some kind of income in the meantime. Um, and so while you know, this really should be people's main approach, that we want to find a new job. We're, we're not trying to figure out how can we stay at home and draw benefits. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that all is really pretty well integrated now. That they're required to file online. We're, we're able to monitor that people are meeting the requirements that are established for being entitled to unemployment insurance benefits, um, and in the in the, in the process, make quite a lot of other services available mm -hmm. to them. Quite a, a lot of really, really a lot oh, of yeah. information. Um, so weekly claims are required to be online. At this point, a person can file a new claim uh, by calling the claim center, but that mm -hmm. will be changing as well. And going forward, it's going to be required that new claims, initial claims, are filed online. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the related question yeah. that came in, I think, to this too, is do the career centers also teach them basic computer skills, mainly for people that do not are not comfortable using a mouse and a keyboard and, or and maybe have never had to go online to do these kind of applications before all their jobs have been more walk in, fill out a piece of paper, Right. Wait for them to call you on the phone. You know, for some people, this is completely new and not anything they've had to do before. Right. Our resource, our career centers are each equipped with resource rooms across the state. So they can go into a resource room and receive some basic information in regards to, here's your link to any works. Mm -hmm. Now, if they need additional 
assistance in how to use the mouse, how to use a keyboard, how to turn on a computer. All of our um, career centers have community partners um, throughout each of their areas. And so and many times those community partners, whether it's vocational rehab or um, community learning centers, whatever their partnerships are, we have really st strived to uh, continue our partnerships so that those who do need additional assistance are going to another uh, location or bringing someone in that can assist them with those basic skills. So that's good being connected to something local, not right. just we're coming at you from the you know capital in Lincoln and here's mm -hmm. you know just Bill, we're saying we're connecting with the people in your town wherever it might be and having them also help you resolve this. Right. Okay. Cool. Um, that looks like it for the questions at the moment. Type in any more if you have them. We've got plenty of time. Um, but we do have a request. Can you, Buffy, give your email address again? Sure. Um, I, I could even probably. How about if I just type it on here? Sure, you can. Oops. Elizabeth Cranford at Nebraska.gov. And that would be specifically for any works. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I will not be much of assistance in regards to any unemployment questions, but if you need navigation assistance in any works, um, that would be where I would come in. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, if you need help with the unemployment, that would be that other email above there and that 800 number. That's for the unemployment right. part of it. Yeah. For the librarians, you're welcome mm -hmm. to contact me at yep. my phone number or email. And address. we'll send you that afterwards, so mm -hmm. you'll have that info. Okay, any other last-minute questions? Looks like we've got a whole bunch all at once there, which is good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Nothing else is coming right now. All right. Anything else you want to? Um, I would really just like to reiterate that um, your career centers in your areas are definitely there and wanting to outreach with libraries in regards to developing partnerships, um, any kind of training you might want on any works, as well as hosting workshops for job seekers and employers, mm -hmm. especially if you do have a lot of people coming in with questions regarding job searches, um, you know, whether it's the, the your local chamber of commerce with your employers, but we definitely want to make sure that you know that we are willing to come to you mm -hmm. and uh, step outside of our career centers in order to deliver whatever services you may need or you might be interested in. Sometimes these trainings can be a lot of fun <laughs> and uh, even just setting up a how to do a resume. Yeah, just seeing all those different parts that are in there, mm -hmm. it was a lot to look at and explore. Um, now, you mentioned in the beginning about the fact that you're doing this connection with our BTOP the broadband grant that we have here the commission right. with the libraries are in, in that. But um, any library could contact you. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to be just in the grant to have you guys come in and help. That's correct. We would like to Do pursue things. those partnerships. Um, right now we're, of course, concentrating on some of the, those that are connected with the broadband mm -hmm. simply right. because there's a deadline yes. in regards to... The grant uh, is ending very later this year officially. Later this year officially. <laughs> yeah. And so we are trying to deliver those services primarily mm -hmm. uh, first. But... If you are receiving a lot of people coming in, uh, whether it's questions with unemployment or just trying to navigate the any work system or how do I do a resume, we do have workshops available. We would love to assist you. Okay. We do actually have a question that just came in about resumes. Um, can they be saved and worked on in more than one session? Yes. Yes, you should go back in and out as you need to to make updates to it. and Definitely. And the nice thing is, is um, you can have up to five resumes really? on any works at any time. Focus them to specific jobs. Exactly. Tailor them to whatever mm -hmm. you're applying for. Yes. Right. That's always a good idea. Play to the job you're uh, applying for. Or That's right. In. <laughs> so this is just the one you have, but if you had more mm -hmm. than one, they'd all be listed Well, here. I, I could even go into my, if I wanted to view all the resumes I've ever had on any works. Oh, wow. You can okay. see I've had quite a few. Some are mm -hmm. testing, some are real. <laughs> 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 um, a lot of them were training. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, you can see all the resumes they've ever created. So which means you can set many offline and have, you can have five active showing at any okay. time. But you can have uh, just almost unlimited on offline. Mm -hmm. And I see the link for partially completed resumes. Which right. And if they come I'm in. I'm working and, on this one. I haven't finished it But it's not it ready yet. to go public. No one to go public. Mm -hmm.
Okay. Any other last minute questions? We've hit the top of the hour, but we did start a few minutes late, so that's not a problem. Um, go ahead and type in and we can uh, make sure we get anything answered before we officially uh, end for this morning. Oh, Jan Sears wants to know if you would come to Kimball and do a workshop. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So um, contact them and would they okay. contact you? Um, I will write that down, Jan. Yeah, Jan Sears, Kimball Public. Wait, that's the immediate, only immediate request right now. Okay. <laughs> She'll be in contact with you, Jen. And I can give, give, you can probably look up your info or I can get it to you for okay. contact. Great. Okay, thanks. All right, any last, anything else before we uh, say goodbye for the morning? Okay, well, thank you very much, Buffy and Greg. This was great. Lots of, like I said, great info we were going to get here today to help all these people that are coming in and needing to uh, figure out what are we doing next. And like you said, underemployed or, <laughs> um, let me see the mouse here and we'll move on. All right, well, thank you very much. Um, thank you, everyone, for attending. The session has been recorded, as usual. Um, soon the recording will be up later today maybe we'll see um and we'll let you all know when it is if you do need to go back and view any of this um the ins help guide that greg was showing will is also available too we'll have that up there so you'll have access to that to use to um in your library when you're trying to navigate the sites and um or to hand out and give to your um, patrons when they come in to use it so thank you very much for attending today and i hope you will join us next week when Ah, it will be our Tech Talk. Um, once a month we do our Tech Talk with Michael Sowers, the Technology Innovation Librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission. And he's going to have Jennifer Korber with him on the line um, from Boston Public Library talking about um, bringing the funny humor back into the library for you and your patrons and your staff. So I um, hope you'll join us next week for that. Um, I'm thinking it will be a lot of fun. <laughs> um, and if you uh, are a Facebook user, and Compass Live does have a page, on um, Facebook, so go ahead and like us there and you will get notifications of all of our upcoming shows. Um, you can see here notifications of what we were doing this morning and when our recordings are available, we also post it on here as well. So this will help you keep up to date with what's going on with Encompass Live if you are a um, Facebook user. So thank you very much and we will see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>